I'm Mark Calloway, Applications Engineer at Man and Machine. And today we're going to take a look at Twinmotion. Twinmotion is a visualization application developed by Epic Games. Okay, so we can either launch it directly through the Epic Games launcher, as you can see on the screen here. But what we're going to do today is inside Revit, when you install Twinmotion, it also adds this tab into the ribbon bar. And directly from within Revit, we can launch our project into Twinmotion. Okay, now I've saved us a few seconds here and I've already got that open. Okay. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview of some of the features available in Twinmotion. Okay. As you can see, we have our model here directly from Revit. Okay. We can control it just using the standard WASD key on the keyboard and my mouse to, to look around. Okay, I'm currently in fly mode, so I can just fly into the model here. But I can very easily go into walk mode. Okay, and gravity kind of turns itself on, and I can walk around. Okay, but for the majority of this exercise, I'm going to be in fly mode just so I can zoom out and we can get a good view of the model here. Okay, so it's quite a good quality model that we've used in this. But we're going to add a load more new features inside Twinmotion. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to look at is the landscape. Okay. So if I just pan across, we can see we can have some sort of background image off in, the, off in the distance to set the scene. And we have this landscape in between, which at the moment is just a, a load of paving. So I'm just going to select the paving and I'm going to delete that. So we essentially have nothing there now. Okay. But I'm just going to put some green into this image here. So if I just expand this panel on the left hand side, okay, we have vegetation and landscape. I'm going to go into landscapes and I'm just going to go for a plain, a flat, grassy uh, scene. So I'm just going to click, drag that across into the main view and drop that there. What, what Twin Motion is going to do is fill that void um, with a, a grassy landscape, okay. We're not restricted to it just being this flat, grassy uh, plane. We can select this surface and we can then start to, to sculpt and modify this terrain. Okay. So we have a number of tools at our, disposable, at our disposal here to raise and, and lower and adjust the texture and the contours of the landscape. Okay. We can adjust the brush size. So at the moment, if I just click out here, I can raise the terrain. I can increase the brush size and affect a much larger area. Okay, as well as raising the terrain, I can lower it too. Okay, we can adjust the intensity so the degree to which it's going to alter the landscape, as well as affecting the ground itself. We can also populate it with content. Okay, so we get a number of assets at our disposal. One of which is trees. Okay, and there's two ways we can place trees. The first one is I select a tree from the palette. I can choose where I want to place that tree. Left click, and I can place an instance of that tree. Okay. What I also have is this vegetation paint. And what that allows me to do is grab and drop any vegetation from the palette into this box at the bottom. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab a couple of trees there. I might also add some flowers into the scene as well, and maybe some grass types as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab some, uh, let's have some uh, poppies and some dandelions and buttercups and, and daisies and such. Okay, and then I can select these in this palette at the bottom, and I can adjust the density of these items, okay. And using this paint brush, instead of individually having to play stuff, I can just draw over the landscape when my computer catches up. Okay. And Revit's gonna place the items that I've added into the palette, okay.
as well as vegetation, we do get some other decor. Okay, so we can place rocks into the model. And we have some miscellaneous items here, such as hedges, leaves, tree stumps, um, and ivy as well. Okay. As well as being able to place vegetation, we do have a large library of objects we can place. Okay. We can see we have some standard objects here. We even have particle effects as well. Okay. So we can add fire, we can add smoke, we can add running water, fountains, all that sort of stuff. For example, we do have some water in this model over here. And I'm just going to add um, a fountain into one of these here. So I'm just going to select this one. It looks quite large. And if I just click on that point there, it's going to add the special effects for the fountain. Okay. What we also have are paths. Okay. So as well as adding decor, we can add people into the model. And we can see one stood over there by the car. Okay. These people are animated, but we can also set paths for them to follow. I'm just going to select a few points maybe around this car park here maybe create a loop okay and once i've created this loop i can customize the settings okay i can choose the type of people to have the type of clothing okay i can choose the width of the path so if I want a wider movement of people, I can widen the path and they will space out a bit more. Okay, I can adjust the density of people. So maybe I don't want quite so many and I can reduce the numbers. Okay, I can change the direction of the path and I can also set them to walk or just be stood still. Okay. As well as being able to add content into the model, we can adjust the environment. Okay. We can specify the location in the world, and this is going to affect stuff such as the height of the sun, um, how bright it is at certain times of the day, at certain times of the year. Okay. We can adjust the weather. We can make it rainy. We're going to see rain effects. Okay, the ground is going to look like it's wet and reflect light differently. We can adjust the season. Okay, we can go from summer to winter. Okay, and what was once rain will now be snow. Okay, and we can even adjust the growth of vegetation as well. Okay, so we can shrink that down so we end up with younger and smaller plants, or we can increase that and we end up with bigger, older, more mature plants. Okay, now I'm just going to adjust these seasons back to something a bit more pleasant. So there we go. Okay. In terms of output, okay, we have a number of options. We can produce a standard rendered image. We can do panoramas, we can do videos, phasing, and we can have a, a presenter mode. Okay. I'm just going to start show you a standard render. And all we need to do is position ourselves within the viewer for the scene that we would like to render. Okay. I can click the create image button and this doesn't create the render but it sets the scene okay and you can create as many of these images as you like if I select the image and go to more I can customize this scene individually I can adjust the location I can change the weather just like we've seen 
I can adjust the lighting, such as the exposure, uh, the colour, heat, um, shadows, so on and so forth. Okay. And to output the images, I'm going to simply go down to this export option down here. Select the image or images I want to export. Hit the start button and it will ask me for a file location in which to save that. Okay. Thank you for watching.